morning, so it's uh, great to see you here and always a, a joy to spend this time together. Our opening hymn this morning, one that I think you know and I think is very suitable to the day, number 619, Ferris Lord Jesus. Through 
Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, the Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Oh, oh come, let us worship. worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and bring us aloud and shout to him with songs. For the Lord is the great God and the great King of all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated and be attentive to words of Scripture. The appointed psalm for this morning is Psalm 89, verses 20 to 37. <coughs> And we'll say it by the half verse. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him, and strike down those who feed him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be a glorious to my I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn, and higher than the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever. And my covenant shall stand firm for him. I will establish his line forever, and as strong as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law, and do not walk according to my judgments, if they break my statutes, and do not keep my commandments, I will punish their transgressions with a rod, and their iniquities with a lash. But I will not take my love from him, nor let my faithfulness through false. I will not break my covenant, nor change what has gone out of my lips. Once for all I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever, and his throne is the sun before me. It shall stand fast forevermore like the moon. And the abiding witness in the sky. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. The reading from the Old Testament is from 2 Samuel chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people from Israel, from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, 
did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you whenever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more. As formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will rise up your offspring after you, who will come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's canticle is canticle 26. You are God. We praise you. You are the Lord. We acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church proclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, O Lord, and help your people, bought off the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory at everlasting. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading from the New Testament is a reading of the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one 
and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near, for through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are built to gather spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our graduate hymn this morning is number 519, The Lord is My Shepherd. According to Mark, 
Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. Jesus said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, Jesus saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized Jesus and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. morning in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In our readings appointed for this morning, we have a recurring theme in which one person has a great vision or a great idea but is not able to achieve that vision in his lifetime. In our Old Testament passage from 2 Samuel, David imagines a great temple that would become the permanent home of the ark. But God tells David that the construction of such a building will not be achieved by him, but will come to fruition through his yet unborn son, Solomon. David has to exercise some spiritual maturity here and content himself with a much less ambitious project that will be a more temporary kind of structure to house the ark. The dream that David has for the construction of the great temple will need it to be handed down to the next generation. In our passage from Ephesians, Paul describes his goal that Jews and Gentiles will become one in Christ, that there will be no cultural distinctions and no tensions between the two groups of people. For Paul, this was not to be achieved in his lifetime. This was to become a source of frustration for Paul as he felt a certain sense of urgency around this goal because he also believed that the second coming of Christ was imminent and something that he would experience personally. Unfortunately, the divisions between the Jewish people and other faiths continued past Paul's lifetime and continue to this day. And we currently see this played out in the war in Gaza in the Middle East. In both of these instances, David and Paul both men of faith and both called by God to leadership roles, exercise their imaginations to visualize a future of possibility that others did not see and that others possibly did not have the courage to strive for. As human beings and as spiritual creatures, we are created in the image of God which means that we are blessed with the gifts of imagination and creativity. But we are also called at times by God to temper those gifts with wisdom and with patience. Both David and Paul were reminded that we are to be committed to God's timelines rather than focusing, focusing on our human understanding of time, which is grounded in the fact 
that our mortal lives are very limited. In other words, we view time in terms of our lifetime, which could be anywhere from, from very young to very old in our understanding. But our lifetimes are really just a blink of an eye in terms of God's time. This same idea is echoed in our Gospel passage from Mark. At this point in the story, the disciples have been rushing around the region, providing healing and hope to people, as well as spreading the good news. And you may remember from two weeks ago, Jesus gave them that commission, go out in pairs, go and teach, go and heal, go and give comfort. So now they've done that, and they've come back, and they're just breathless to tell Jesus about all the things that they have been doing. And they do share this news of all the good works that they have done. And Jesus then encourages them to withdraw to a quiet place after all of this work, to reflect, to rest, and to become restored because their physical bodies have human limitations, and we all understand that. Canadian theologian Herbert O'Driscoll describes this cycle of doing and being, that we are called by God to act, to be doing, but then we are equally called to pull back and to focus on being, on replenishing our physical energies as well as replenishing our spiritual energies. It is in this time of being that we are much more likely to encounter God and to hear what he is calling us to next. Doing and being. This rhythm also reminds us that we are creatures with a dual nature. We are spiritual creatures who inhabit physical bodies for our mortal lifetimes here on earth. And we use those years of mortal living to experience a wide range of challenges and triumphs, relationships. We experience what it means to love and to be loved. Sometimes we experience what it is to struggle, and we are intended to have that experience of growing spiritually. All of that is part of the preparation for eternal life that will begin after our physical bodies have worn out and died. Jesus is reminding the disciples that they too are spiritual creatures who inhabit physical bodies, and that balancing out doing with taking time out for being will ultimately allow them to truly care for and nurture themselves, both spiritually and physically. But as we hear in the story, just as Jesus tries to live out this cycle of doing and being, we get the plot twist. Suddenly he is called upon to meet the needs of the crowds, to heal and to teach. We see this again when he crosses over the lake to Gennesaret, and he is essentially mobbed by people who are in need of healing and of the good news that is central to his ministry. We hear that Jesus is motivated by his compassion for these people. Like David and Paul, Jesus has a vision for a very different future. In his imagination, Jesus can conceive of a world that is free from suffering and free from ignorance, particularly the ignorance that promotes injustice, prejudice, abuses of power, and blind authority to a power that is not legitimate, that is not of God. But in his three-year ministry, Jesus does not see that dream come to fruition. That vision became the inheritance of the Christian church and the generations that followed, including us. When we consider all of this in our contemporary context, there is some wisdom that we can definitely draw out. Firstly, God has given us the ability to visualize ideas that are sometimes so large and so audacious 
that they can be scary or seem impossible. But if we consider the familiar words of Ephesians 3, we know that we do not need to fear. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Sometimes we are able to achieve far beyond our wildest expectations, but only if we allow God to work in us. And that means, like the disciples, we also have to work at balancing out doing and being. I think that ACPC is quite amazing on the doing side. We have such a wide range of ministries that are keen about doing. And we had another one added yesterday, Stacy spearheading hamburger and hot dog sale as a form of fundraiser. But that also gets us out into the community, meeting people, being with people. We don't know what all kinds of sparks come from that. So there's another great example of doing. We also, I think, are pretty good at the business of being. We have our Centered Prayer Group that happens over at St. B's on Friday afternoons, as well as the Rosary Group. And we come together on Sunday mornings to worship and to support each other as a Christian community. But we are also, right at this moment, engaged in the business of being and of nurturing our souls and our spiritual side. We need both doing and being in order for God to work in our individual and our shared lives in ways that will allow us to achieve more than we can ask or imagine. So I would say from that, feel free to dream about ACPC. Big dreams, small dreams, and have faith to rely on God to do his work through us. Secondly, like David, Paul, and Jesus, we have to recognize that some of our dreams may not come to fruition within the human time frames that we would prefer. I think it would be great if tomorrow there were no more wars or prejudice or things like that, evil in the world. But that's my time frame, not God's. And we're reminded by that with David being told by God to hold off on building the temple and to leave it to his future son to do that work. I think we can recognize that it must have been incredibly frustrating for David to have to do that. But God ultimately rewarded David for his spiritual maturity and for his patience. And we have to remember that the temple did get built in the generation that followed. The temple was built on God's schedule. Paul likewise had a dream that the divisions between the Jewish people and other communities would become healed, and that all humanity would become united under the one newly emerging Christian church, under Christ. That did not happen in his lifetime, as he thought it would. But that does not mean that Paul was wrong to have that vision, to have that dream. And it doesn't mean that he was overly ambitious. It was a dream of such magnitude that it would take many generations to achieve. And we are still called in our generation to be people of tolerance, nonviolence, and understanding. Like Jesus, we are called to heal the hurts of the world and to guard against ignorance that keeps us divided. Paul was inspired by Jesus to see the possibilities for a different way of living in harmony for all people. We are called to pick up that torch from Paul and to do all that we can in our generation to contribute to seeing that vision come to reality. We should not be Become discouraged if that doesn't happen in our lifetimes. But we should be encouraged every time we see or experience an act or a word that promotes peace, unity, and a call for the common good of all people. 
That is our mission. If we return for a moment to the words of Ephesians 3, there is a second part for us to consider. After we have the words, Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, we have the additional words, Glory to God, from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus. It is in the second sentence that we have those very encouraging words that remind us that sometimes the very big visions that we may have may take more than our lifetime. It may be generation to generation to achieve because those visions will be achieved on God's timelines. Keeping in mind that our mortal lives are a time to experience and to grow spiritually in preparation for eternal life, there are some visions that need to be grappled with by multiple generations, including ours, so that they too can be challenged and contribute to achieving that vision. If you think about that chart I gave you a couple of weeks ago, one that had the timeline in the form of a cross, at one end we have Genesis, creation, and at the other end we have Revelation, the end of time the Alpha and the Omega. That is God's timeline. We fit somewhere along that continuum, and our call is to do that. We are still in the middle of the story of humanity, and we have work to do to pick up on the vision that Jesus had for the world, where all needs of all people are met, and where all human beings are treated with dignity and respect and not ruled by ignorance. We are called to contribute to seeing Christ's vision for this world come to fruition. So I will leave you with a challenge for the week ahead and I include myself in this challenge. Take a moment each day over the next six days to say and think about the words of Ephesians 3. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus. Saying the words is the doing part, and reflecting on what those words mean to you is the being part. And then next week when we all come together for a combined service for Eucharist with Reverend Keith, I will definitely be keen to hear your thoughts and what happened when you, when you thought about, said and then thought about those words. We walk in the shadow of the great figures of the Bible like David and Paul. And we certainly strive to walk alongside Jesus every day. Saying these words and reflecting on them can be a useful reminder and a daily encouragement that we are part of a very large vision for a more Christ-like world. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with the affirmation of our faith, the Apostles' Creed, and I would invite you, as you are able and comfortable, to stand and say it with me. I believe in God, the Father of the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And I would invite you to sit, stand, or kneel as is your custom and comfort.
comfort for our time of prayer. Let us pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ on behalf of the church, the world, and one another. Our response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Dear Father, thank you for our Good Shepherd. Thank you for his compassion and mercy. Thank you for the peace he gives through the blood of his cross. Thank you. We adore and bless you for your loving kindness to sinners like us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Establish the church as your living temple. Build on the foundation of prophets and apostles with Christ as our cornerstone. Make its words precious and its actions holy. Use it to feed the world with the living bread of your holy word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be the faithful shepherd to your persecuted church. Protect them from those who hate the name of Jesus and seek to scatter and destroy his flock. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for making this congregation part of the body of Christ. Keep us in union with him, our cornerstone and Savior. Let all we do conform to the witness of prophets, apostles, and martyrs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give wisdom and guidance to everyone learning to be a spiritual director discipleship partner or mentor for those seeking to walk more closely with Christ. Make them humble, faithful, and radiant with the beauty of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. you condemned kings who are abusive shepherds of your people. Warn and guide our earthly leaders. Teach them to use power and authority to protect and bless their citizens and to do your will. Teach us, teach each of us to share what we have with the poor and the hungry. Teach us to believe that you bless and multiply our gifts to your glory and for the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with those whose work is difficult and dangerous, especially military and first responders. Make them brave, wise and just. Use them to bring safety and hope to dangerous places. Raise and heal them when they fall. Give steadfast hearts to their loved ones until they are reunited. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor and needy, the sick and injured, the lonely and grieving, the imprisoned and abused, the homeless and disposed. Ease their suffering or sorrow. Today, we also pray for Bill, Philip, Jerry, Randy, Lorene, Rachel, Ruth, Karen, Chuck, Brian, Kalina, Ella, Georgina, Dagmar, Wayne, John, Diana, Becky, Sean, Reverend Bill, Cecil, Bob, Chris, Sally, Sharon, Debbie, Brian, Lisa, Heather, Nancy, Evan, Shelly, Bernie, Doug, Tim, Ray, Teresa, 
and Shannon. Be their good shepherd. Feed them with the bread of healing, forgiveness, and hope. Bless everyone who cares for them and give them strength and joy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for Nippon C. Koke. In our Pictou County Council of Churches, we pray for the Holy Name, R.C. Picto. We pray for St. Andrew's Cold Harbor, our ACW prayer partner ministry. In our parish level of prayer, we pray for St. Bees in Westville. Merciful Father, keep safe our beloved dead until you reunite us in your, our own house. Grant us faith in your dear Son to walk confidently through death's dark veil, encouraging one another in his name. Bring us into your kingdom, where you feed all whom you have redeemed with the banquet fair and rich wine of the Lamb's highest feast. Hear and graciously answer our prayers, dear Lord, as is best for us and most glorifies your holy name. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn this morning is number 414. God of the Spirit.
through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. And I just want to say that that's another example of having a vision for something and doing and carrying it out. So it does. It is going to happen in Julie's lifetime. Um, but that that idea of God gives us imagination and vision and the ability to dream. And so um, I don't think of it all. They want to count the meats. So yesterday, uh, group of four of us, myself, Loretta, Joy, and Kent, all headed down to Soviet Cellarton, and we had our first uh, Christchurch fundraiser barbecue uh, since 2019, and it was a success. We didn't quite break even, but we did have a lot of inventory. We had a lot of overhead, so we had a lot of inventory left for the second one. And the second one will be August 17th, so um, anybody that can come and help out, we're going to try to go a little bit longer, but we're going to need a few more people to help. So if you're available, great. We'll see you on the 17th at 10.30. Um, and thank everybody for, if you came out and, and helped or if you made donations or things like that. Um, so August 17th, put that in calendars. Also at Sophie Skeleton. And then we have um, Food Bank Sunday will be two Sundays. Day. It's the first Sunday of the month, and the food bank can really use our support. Um, cupboards are dwindling, so if you can put anything together, that would be great. Uh, two things coming up in the fall. We hope to organize something in conjunction with the food bank um, to do a fundraiser and some fun things with the church at large. And we will be also um, bringing back or gathering up donations for G.R. Saunders School, the elementary school here in Sellerton for their back to school. So anything it's monetary or school supplies that you can provide, we can go to a little box and back to uh, put those in. And I think that's it. Thank you. And thank you again for spearheading hot dog and hamburgers and, and you know, the, yet again, a vision for something we could do came to fruition got another another cycle coming, but be inspired. Maybe a vision will come to you, an idea, a dream to um, continue to move us forward as a, as a faithful community. And on that note, I uh, would like to uh, start out our Bible and group again. Um, it was a dud. So, yeah, I mean, two of us went, but uh, uh, but anyway, so I thought I would bring it to everyone and say, tell me what you would like to see in the Bible and Brew. Where would you like to see it? What format would you like us to, to work with? Uh, I had chosen one of the readings for the next Sunday, the Gospel for the next Sunday. Um, like I said, two of us came all the time and uh, but I want it to, to go forward but I want it to go forward with with a group of people um, who want to discuss and so bring it bring it to me what you would like that format to be and uh, probably September we'll, we'll get it rolling again thanks thank you another vision no, that was not vision. <laughs> the last time Reverend Joanne was here, she announced that she had to have her cell phone on because I'm in an impending something. Yes. Uh, <laughs> right at the end of the service, just before everybody, well, as everybody was leaving, she was at the back, the phone rang, and she did a sprint to the front here. Thank you. Yes, so my, my uh, grandson, uh, Rowan Felix, has arrived safely at nine pounds three ounces. So he's a he's a big boy. He's a big eater, but he's a big sleeper and a big cuddler. So oh, that is um, perfect. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yes, his his other two brothers think he's quite marvelous. Uh, I was looking after them. Their shepherd's almost five, and Tyree is almost three. And when uh, my daughter and son-in-law came home with Rowan, 
they had their favorite toys lined up. So here goes Rowan into the bassinet, and then they're showing him, this is a monster truck. <laughs> this is Play-Doh. And so being big brothers, they were introducing him to, uh, to their world. But um, yeah, I'm certainly very grateful and grateful to God for that and for your support because I'm sure, yes, when I was here two weeks ago and I'm just waiting to hear that, that news, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, one of anticipation but great joy when it happens. So thank you for sharing that. But he missed my birthday. Yes, he was supposed to be born on Loretta's birthday, but he didn't, yeah, it didn't quite work that way. So that's all right. All right, if there are no more um, announcements, our closing hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, number 399. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.